For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and his and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours, but his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received that was I would receive what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with te- the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthy worthless slave, throw him into, into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hey, Clark, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. This is his first time being liturgist. Thank you, sir. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. This is our second of three parables from the 25th chapter of Matthew. This is another tough one because this is Jesus answering the question that the disciples asked in the 24th chapter, what's it going to be like when you come back? They don't really believe he's going anywhere. They, don't think, they think he's going to go right to the kingdom and establish Israel again in the land of promise. But we know that's not what happens. But here we are in 25 again. That's week we read the parable of the ten virgins or the ten bridesmaids, five who were prepared, five who weren't prepared, and it's the same way. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You all know what gnashing of teeth means, right? Grinding. And agony and anguish. So, this is one that you can only explain by explaining what it doesn't mean before you explain what it does mean. So let's look at this one. As if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. Now, just like last week and the week before, when we get to the end of Matthew's Gospel, you have to take it in the context of all of Matthew's Gospel, but here we are again with someone entrusting a lot of money to slaves. What is wrong with this picture? If you were a slave and someone gave you this much money, what would you be doing with it? I would be taken off as soon as he was gone, or I would be investing in buying my freedom with by proceeds or something like that. But um, how many of you know how much money a talent was? It's not like a talent bill or a talent coin. Talent basically is a, is a weight and measure. It's a big bunch of money. It's a boatload of money or whatever kind of load you want to call it. It's a big load of money, okay? Some of you are smiling out there when I said boatload, not, not just boatload. Okay, so he entrusts one slave with five boatloads of money, one with two boatloads of money, and one with just a boatload of money. 
He goes away for a long time, a long time, and he comes back. One has invested his money, the one with five talents worth of money. Five boatloads of money, he gives him five boatloads more. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your master. And the second one, two talents, two boatloads of money. He comes back and gives him two more. Then there's the one who says, okay, I knew you were a hard man, a harsh man, so I buried it in the yard. And he says, get away from me and go into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth because if you, those who have been given much, much will be given to them. Those who have been given little, little will be given to them. And it's a hard word from Jesus, isn't it? Because Jesus is the one who is the man with the boatload of stuff here. We don't like to think of Jesus saying to somebody, get out of here, do we? Because Jesus is not like that. He's a Jesus we know and love and Jesus gentle, meek and mild, smile upon this little child. You know, we don't like hearing about Jesus having this other side to him. Which is why we gotta look at what it means. How many of you have a talent? How many of you are talented in some area? Oh, come on, I know y'all. Yes, thank you. Toby raised her hand. Toby is very talented as an artist. She's sitting there with Karen Luck, who's a very talented artist, next to two talented musicians. And I don't know what your husband does, Toby, but he's, he's engineering, but he's got talents in that way. Toby likes to write, and she writes beautifully and does beautiful artwork. Then behind her is Larry and Madeline and Kathy. Kathy makes quilts. Madeline has a beautiful home, and Larry just can build anything you ask him to build. So I can go through the whole congregation and say what y'all do well. So if somebody tell me what your talent is. Who here has a talent? Raise your hand. If you have a talent, raise your hand. Every hand in the place should go up because y'all have talents. It's not about that. Don't worry because, I mean, I, I hit on Milt all the time because Milt has a lovely singing voice. I say, you ought to be in the choir. You ought to be in the choir. But that's not what this is about either. It's not about money either, so everybody go, Whew. not about money. It is kind of, but not. that's not about money per se because even though it's talking about a grand scheme of money, a great big wad of cash, and it's different if it's gold or if it's silver because, you know, they have different values. So this is a lot of money here we're talking. It is entrusted to slaves. But it's not about that either. Now, how many of you have heard this preached as, if you just give 10% to the church, God's going to bless you? Because that's what, we're, you know, we're talking, oh, I forgot my joke this morning. I didn't tell my joke yet. Maybe I'll do that later. My tithing stewardship joke of the week. But last time this passage came up, what did I do? Does anybody remember? John remembers. I know John McGuckin remembers what I did last time. Madeline remembers what I did last time this came up. I gave away money, my own money. I gave $150 away at each service. Madeline, what did you do with your money? Um, it was bizarre. We had a silent auction and made a lot of money. John, what did you do with your money? He did indeed. He's still driving around. He's still making money. He bought strawberry plants too, right? And sold some of those. And then he bought some gas for his truck and he goes out and he moves things for people. He's moved stuff from my house to the recycling center. He's done that for a lot of folks here and he still does it. Kaylee, do you remember what you did with your money? You drew a bird and bought a frame at the thrifty penny and I bought it, it's in my office on the shelf. Anyone would like to see this beautiful artwork of the younger Kaylee? Melissa, what'd you do with your money? You bought socks. And I thought you bought some feminine hygiene products as well. You said, is it okay just to buy stuff with it? I said, yep, it's fine to do that. Now some people didn't do anything with theirs, so it went with the parable, but it's not about that either, it's not about money. Believe it or not, this is not an endorsement of capitalism, which a lot of people write about. Oh, well, they really do. They think this is a capitalism because if you just invest and, you know, you'll, you'll get a return on your money. Nope, sorry about that. Because Jesus doesn't really care a lot about money other than its use in the world. What does Jesus care about? What do you think this is about? It's about stewardship, for one thing. And when you're a steward, which is what these slaves are entrusted to be, they're entrusted to be stewards, someone who's given care of something on behalf of another. What is Jesus giving us to care for in the world? Each other, gospel, the gospel, the good news of his life, his death, his resurrection for our sake. What is mercy? Think about mercy a moment. What are you going to say, Toby?
It is about using the things God gives us to the greatest potential for goodness. Amen. It's exactly what this is about. It's not about things that are measurable, because we're talking about such a huge sum of money that it couldn't really be measured and counted exactly. But we're talking about the indescribable, undefinable gifts of God that come into each of our lives. So, what happens if you're given mercy? Now, remember, this is Matthew, and what did Matthew start his gospel with? The Beatitudes, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. What is mercy that we're given? What's going to happen if you take your mercy into the world and show it to others? Five times it's going to spread. What if it's grace? What if it's peace? What if it's the knowledge of your own salvation that doesn't just stop with you? Because too many of us stop with our own salvation, don't we? We say, I'm in. Thank you, Jesus. The rest of you, you're on your own. Which is why whenever anybody knocks on my door, and people knock on my door all the time saying, you know where you're going when you die? Or, you know what happens to you when Christ comes? And if I answer, I'm going to go with Christ, they are very disappointed because they cannot save a soul. People will ask me sometimes, how many souls have you saved? I said, not a one. I am not the savior of the world. Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. I am his cheerleader. I am his cruise director. I am the person who gets people to him. But I am not the savior of the world. That is Christ alone. But if we are not stewards of these things, these indefinable, wonderful things that we're given, what's going to happen to the world? Not much. Not much at all. It's good. The world's in trouble right now. Have you noticed that? What's going on in the world right now that's got you troubled? That's not a rhetorical question. You have to answer me back. What's going on in the world that troubles you right now? Wars. Wars. Israel and Hamas, Gaza, mass shootings, genocide in Sudan. There was another killing this week in Sudan of 1,300 people, 1,300 innocent people slaughtered in Sudan. Ukraine, Vladimir Putin, all the things in the world that deny Christ. But we have been given Christ in abundance. We have been given a boatload of Jesus people, and we're supposed to share them with the world. We're supposed to be sharing grace and peace. How do we do that? By the way we live, by the way we forgive others, by the way we show love to others, by the way we fill shoe boxes and bags of groceries, by the way we buy sanitary products. And you can say that in church out loud, sanitary products, because that's something women need that cannot afford it. Anything you do for someone else, you do for Jesus Christ. Anything you do, the ramp on the thrifty penny is for Jesus Christ. Now. I've had to come to the conclusion that I am a disabled American. Oh, I can't walk up steps anymore. Without a lot of help and a lot of prayer, and I saw some of you just looking scared when you've gone up these three steps, two steps here this morning. And a ramp is something that you don't know how much you need it until you need it. But people go over there and they can get into the thrifty penny and shop, and there are people who need the thrifty penny, not because they can get a good bargain there and not have to pay full price for something, but because that's all they can afford. For people coming here today who are grieving, and we're going to minister to them because we can, because Jesus Christ has ministered to us. We've got to share Christ. That's why we're giving Bibles to these kids this morning. Raise your hand if you're getting a Bible this morning. we got some kids. Clark's getting a Bible. Allison's getting a Bible. Ace is getting a Bible. No, Ezra's getting a Bible. That's right. Sorry, Ezra is. Ace got his a couple years ago. Who else is getting a Bible? Oh, Austin's Austin. back there. He's getting a Bible. You know, we're giving you Bibles, don't you? Are we giving you a Bible, Clark, you think? Any idea why we're giving you a Bible? So you can give it to somebody else. Not the book itself, but what's inside it. You can share it with somebody else. Now, I must brought my Bible from when I was a kid that I got, but it looks very well worn, like I used it a lot. I didn't use it a lot. I sat there in church and did the zipper back and forth, and it had a zipper on it because I had annoyed my mother. That's why I joined the choir. I keep telling people I joined the choir because she couldn't plunk me in the head. And down the pew, I'd be up there like, la, 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 la. You can't reach me. But something happened. The closer I sat to the preacher, the more I heard the preacher, the more I listened to the words. The gospel got hold of me in a big way. When I was 10 years old, you know what I asked for for Christmas? I asked for a nativity set. When you were 10 years old and you asked for Jesus for Christmas, it's sort of the handwriting on the wall, you know that? But we're given the gospel, we're given grace, we're given peace, we're given mercy, we're given love, 
an abundance of love. And what does this passage tell us about God, that God is the giver of all these good gifts? And God doesn't give you more than you can handle, does he? And that doesn't mean problems, because that's, that's the misquoted verse of Scripture. That God will give us gifts according to our ability to use them, which is why one got five, one got two, one got one. That we're all expected to give God a return for what we've done, what we've been given. Which is why we have this lovely story from Thessalonians today about staying awake. Because what does it say? For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. That's why we're going to give these children Bibles today. That's why we're going to give everybody the word of God. That's why we're going to love everybody who walks in the door here. No matter what you've done in your past, no matter what you may do in your future, God loves you, and we're going to show God's love to you. Amen? You really mean that, people? You really mean that? Yes. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we get these kids to join me?